Well, I can be honest with you, Jeff. The, the level of protection decreases over about six month period. You really don't want to get COVID-19. Well, today I'm with Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, the Senior Director of GBAC. And Gavin, we've talked about vaccines so many times. Things are changing now, and many are discussing booster shots. What's the word on the street, Gavin, about booster shots? Uh, great news. Really exciting news, Jeff. Uh, boosters are becoming available across the country. We're not seeing supply chain issues on these vaccinations. I know uh, the local uh, pharmacy here in the area that uh, gives booster shots. I saw the lines yesterday out the door, down the street, so people are getting booster shots. Um, they're available and they're important because of the science that's just been published probably in the last three to four weeks. Now, Gavin, I know you had your um, immunization a while back, probably about when I got mine. Isn't it still good? Why do you need the booster? Well, I can be honest with you, Jeff. I got my first vaccine dose for COVID-19 in April. And really, we didn't really know how long that immunity or how that protection was going to last. New studies that have been published by the National Institutes of Health, the NIH, they, 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 they did a study. They found that for example, the Johnson Johnson vaccine, it, it, it decreases, the, the level of protection decreases over about six month period. They're also seeing that the mRNA vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, they also decrease. It's a little bit longer, but they do decrease. And we know this from other vaccines like flu and tetanus and measles. Uh, well, actually, measles lasts for life. But again, tetanus, we get every you know, five to 10 years. But the flu vaccine is a good one, a good example to compare with, because we get the flu vaccine each year because the flu vaccine is similar to the COVID-19 vaccine. It doesn't last for many years. It lasts for a few months and it protects us over that flu season. So we're learning that the COVID-19 vaccine is very similar. Okay, so when you get your vaccine, it builds up your antibodies, correct? Yes, it does. Okay, so my question is, besides getting your antibodies from a vaccine, how can you get them? Well, that's a good question, Jeff. And people are learning a lot about the, the immune system or the body's defense system against infection. The two things you need to know is that if you get infected, your body does react to that infection. So you have what's called B lymphocytes and they attack a bit of the germ, the bacteria or the virus in the body. Then you have T lymphocytes and T lymphocytes attack the cells that are infected by the germs, the bacteria and the viruses. So remember B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes. We know through vaccinations, through these vaccines, they actually, again, the vaccines don't contain the virus. They contain parts, the proteins of the virus, which stimulates the immune system, the B, B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes. So without getting sick, remember, we, the, the vaccines do not contain the virus, only little bits and pieces of the virus. So you, you can't get sick from the vaccine. But the vaccines are designed to stimulate your body defense system, your immune system. And that's how they work. So again, it's like, oh, I'm getting exposed to the virus like I would when I get naturally infected. My immune system then is able to respond and make my antibodies, which give me protection, without getting any symptoms, without getting the risk of getting COVID-19. And I want to emphasize, Jeff, you really don't want to get COVID-19. It is an awful disease, so we need to do everything we can to avoid it. I'm trying to avoid it, so I agree with you. So these antibodies, someone gets COVID, they get the antibodies naturally, uh, or they get they have the vaccine. But let's talk about proving that you have the antibodies, because some people will say, um, as long as I can be, t I can prove I have the antibodies, I don't need the vaccine. Is it that easy to get tested for antibodies? No, it's not. Um, we don't routinely do this, and the reason is you have to take a blood sample. So we, the resources, the labs, the testing, you know, the time, uh, the fact that we would have to get permission from, all, from everyone, I need to draw a blood, blood sample, th th that doesn't happen. Uh, again, in, if you're a, uh, a worker or you're someone that is in a high risk um, environment, in an indoor space or, or, where, or where, where your place of work, then maybe you can go to your physician and ask to be tested for antibodies. I know, you know, you know Jeff, Jeff, I've been vaccinated for rabies. I know when I worked um, with wild animals and zoo animals, I got tested each year to make sure my, I had antibodies to my rabies vaccine, but that's because I worked in a special situation. Do I get tested for antibodies for COVID-19? No, there's no reason to. 
So I, I follow the studies, I follow what the publications are coming out from CDC and NIH and the World Health Organization, and I look, look at those studies. So it's important to understand those studies are showing the vaccines don't last for years, they last for months, and that's why the boosters are so important right now. And what I'm encouraged to see when I go to booster clinics like I did on Saturday and Sunday on the weekend, I'm seeing long, long lines. So it's really important if you're traveling, and a lot of people are, for Thanksgiving, or in the month of November, or the month of December for the holidays, and it's been a period of time, say six months, I would highly recommend you follow the CDC guidelines on getting a booster vaccine before you travel. 